So, Dominican Republic. Zeno moved to DR. Yeah. So, Zeno moved away from Cuba, which makes this very appropriate because we're talking about Cuba. Moved away from Cuba. Started um, producing tobacco, or started producing cigars from tobacco made in the Dominican Republic. And the Dominican Republic, this is the information that I got from Davidoff. The reason why they picked, or the reason why they really liked the tobacco from the Dominican Republic is because it was really mild tobacco and far more um, palatable for a lot, of the, a lot of their customers in Europe. Because a lot of cu European customers, they were used to smoking milder Cuban cigars. And the Dominican, the Dominican Republic had very similarly mild-ish tobacco. Nicaragua, on the other hand, was a lot stronger and much uh, far more nutrients in the soil. It's the volcanic ash, and that volcanic ash was producing tobacco much with, with, with a much greater kick to it as opposed to the Dominican tobacco. And that's where they were able to produce their new line of you know, white-label cigars, their core line of signature cigars, and they were also able to produce a lot of their other cigars as well but there was something interesting that you and i noticed in um in the uh, academy which we were looking at and thinking hmm this seems a bit mm, this seems a bit funny so i'm gonna let you say this part don't look at me man. You, you you introduced well, it the, in the, the the market share values of all the different regions well i i don't think it's related specifically for the Back in the time in the nineties. No, no, this is but this is just, more recent information. There was just error. I don't know if easy because uh, purely because it's Davidoff Academy and they push everything about Davidoff. But they mentioned that the biggest market, the biggest producers of the cigars at the moment is DR with two hundred and fifty million, following by Nicaragua, Cuba, Honduras, which is completely wrong because Nicaragua made at least twice, yeah. almost twice more than the Nicaragua the have half the market. In terms so, of well, maybe the they use the information not at the current state. Possibly. Maybe they used like ten years ago, which is still not relevant. Maybe fifteen, twenty years ago. I don't know because even then Nicaragua was producing a great deal of uh, cigars, and also, but maybe the distinction is Ministry of Cigars. They t they recently released uh, an article discussing how much, uh, how many you know the sales from each region, right? And Nicaragua have about half the market, including the U.S. And the U.S. is basically the biggest market in the world at the moment. So half the market is Nicaragua, a quarter of it is the Dominican Republic, and then, a th uh, and then less than that is Cuba, if you include the U.S. And they're talking about sales. The, the Academy from Davidoff, they were discussing, um, <clears throat> they were discussing production. So I don't know. Do you? I have a theory. Go on. I never discussed that with people from Davidoff. Uh, do you think one of the reasons as well to move to DR is the American market? Because that was before the cigar boom. Course. Cigar boom came like three or four years later. Well, I mean, look, consider the, consider and, the uh, uh, embargo. The embargo happened David in the 60s. Davidoff already have, uh, uh, I think, selling a lot of cigarettes in the States. You know, accessories and stuff. They already start picking up as a bigger company. And they don't want to miss the American market. They prefer to... Why would you want to miss the biggest, ma the biggest market in the world? As I never seen As that on official statement somewhere. Don't want to say but that. I, I, a few times I think about it because that was just one of, of the topics which was a one lot of, the of people discussing. You know, why they moved. And I was thinking, is it not as well one of the points, obviously, you know, you want to get that... 300 million cigars over there. Obviously, you're not going to sell all, only your cigars there, but you can get a chunk of that market Precisely. and sell them way more because already Ottinger was a big company. Yeah. Maybe not a huge corporation, but it was on the state to go in there. Yeah. And they just want to be more and more... Of course. And I think that's probably one of the biggest factors because you have to remember, Zeno wasn't at the helm at this stage, right? Zeno was not the one making the decisions. He wasn't saying, okay, I want this, I want this to happen, I want this to happen. He was effectively a cigar rep, but a very respectable cigar rep who did a lot for the industry, even in that time when he, when the company was bought out by Ottinger. So this is not to try and say that he had no influence. Of course he had some influence, but the company was not his. So it wasn't like Zeno was saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stop production in Cuba. We're gonna move over to um, uh, the Dominican Republic. More than likely, it was a business decision. They looked at the market, the embargo had been going on. It's been 20 years embargo 30. in. No, 1990s. 20 years. Yeah, 30. Point. 1968, right? 
1962. And, oh, so yeah, 30 years. 1961, 62. Kennedy made the embargo. Kennedy he died in 63. He did, he did, he did. Kennedy died, mm. yeah. The mm. Kennedy didn't manage to smoke even a quarter of the cigars he buy <laughs> before the embargo, so. So yeah, the company probably realized, wait a minute, we've got a whole industry here where we can't sell any of our products to or any of our, you know, uh, any of our own branded products, which is bad for business. So what do we do? Well, if we stop producing Cuba, uh, cigars in Cuba and we move everything over to the, Domin the Dominican Republic or Nicaragua or Honduras, we can sell to the biggest cigar consuming market in the world. More than likely, that was the reason. The quality control thing, uh, um, it's a bit shaky. It's a bit shaky. That's a bit of a shaky one because what, you know, Zeno turned around and said, oh, I don't like the quality of this. So the company, the whole company just shifted on his word. I doubt it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big topic to talk about. As I say, it's uh, also Cuba producing a certain amount of cigars back in the time. And if they even want to grow, maybe they know all, they can't produce more than what they're already producing. No. Instead of, as you say, shifting into the, another country, start crazy heavy at the, at the beginning with they have the, they have full control yeah they 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 literally have full control because they 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 as they advertise from crop to shop they have full control from the actual seed to the final product when they sell it in their retail store they had and, and none of that control when they were in cuba as every strategic plan they might have a plans to grow and bring more and more blends as, as what's happened actually mm. you know all the different blends and play with the blends and bring more because in cuba you have the you have the Chateau line, you have the standard line. That's it. That's it. That's it. That was and it, yeah. Maybe if you ask for another line, it, it wouldn't be easy because already Cuba have enough on their back. Yeah. Just, you know, their lines and they stop, you know, back in the time, they stop some of the lines. They start new lines, you know, they start brands like mm. Rubaina, that kind of stuff. You know, they have already have plans for Rubaina, you know, I think 1994. Yeah. Rubaina starts, so that's literally pretty much after, after Zinu left. Precisely. So you got to... I mean, the, the, the reason why the quality argument doesn't make that much sense to me is because when you look at cigars from Cuba around that time, the cigars were great. Even when you smoke, when you smoke cigars from 19... I, were, don't, I don't like that the comparison because... I'm not going to... Okay. They're this, good, but you smoke them now. That's, that's a fair point. 40 years later. That's a fair point. However, we're talking about quality in terms of construction. Age doesn't really affect construction that much. I mean, it does to some extent. Yes, because the cigar, you're not going to find plug cigars mm -hmm. that old because the leaves with that time, they get thinner and thinner. Even if it's perfect store, you're not yeah, going to... No, I've seen true. cigars that's which true. are that's 48 true. ring gauge producing. Yeah. I measured them with my ring gauge and they're 46 just because they've been 40 years already in no, there. That's a not good a point. bone dry cigar. That's a good so, I mean, point. Yeah. with the time, the tobacco leaves just getting a little bit thinner and you know yeah because over over time the yeah. the actual density I, I smoke fairly well no not crazy amount but i would no, say but it smoke, does make a smoke a decent amount of vintage cuban cigars i'm talking from the 80s 70s 60s not much of a 60s but 70s 80s 90s quality has always been good for me mm. i never have a plugged one taste wise well you not compare the taste it's a 40 years old cigar it can be completely yeah, yeah, gone a yeah, yeah. long time ago so we're not talking about but I don't smoke a, a cigar which is uneven. I don't smoke a cigar which the, it's plugged or need to light in every two minutes or something like that. So I can't remember smoking that kind of cigars mm. from that time. But I, I still, I still want to. I still think it's. I still think it's a relevant point to make, and that is that Cuban cigars were still very popular even at that time. It's a. It's a more. Maybe it's more acceptable from the public if you say the quality control instead of we're greedy and we want to go on a bigger market. But it's not greedy. It's just good business. Okay. It's not the point. It's not greed. It's just a smarter decision because they had no control over their own branded products in Cuba. But as soon as they moved to the Dominican Republic, they've got full control. They've got access to the actual it's, it's, seed. It will be dilemma for... Forever, you know, that yeah. will be a question which will not find an I answer. I think that's probably a more reasonable reason to move over than to say, oh, we didn't like the quality. Because it's like, well, come on, you know, the quality was actually still really good. It's not like people were, you know, it's not like people were looking at the uh, cigars at the time like, oh, no, they're terrible. We don't like Cuban cigars anymore. They're all really crappy. Didn't happen. Cuban, Cuba was still producing high quality products. More than likely, it was because... 
Davidoff just wanted to have better control. They were a growing company. They were, they were growing a lot faster than what Cuba was allowing them to do. Just, just an example, I just mm. came in on my mind. Late 80s, 80s and late 80s, early 90s, that's the best time for uh, Cuba. Best Lanceros are from that age. Precisely. Davidoff produced two Lanceros back in the time, in that time. Yeah. So that Lanceros I consider was a, one of the best Cuban cigars ever made. Precisely. So this idea that it was quality control may have played a minor part in it because of the quality control that they wanted to implement. Because they wanted to implement uh, almost like a Ford level conveyor belt type quality control, right? You know, make sure they're checking at every single level. So maybe they had, they had some minor um, issue there. But to say that, oh, we didn't like the quality of it and that's why we moved, I think that's bullshit. I think the, uh, the main reason is they wanted better control. And since then, they've gone for strength, from strength to strength. So, brilliant decision on Davidoff's part. But I do call bullshit on the uh, quality control thing. I think it was, as you say, they wanted to move over to the Dominican Republic and they wanted access to the biggest market on the planet. The United States. Why wouldn't you? Of course you do. And now the company's worth what? 1.3 billion? It's the biggest company in the cigar industry. It might not be the biggest cigar producing company in the world, but as an entity in the cigar industry, it is the biggest company. And I think the fact that they moved over to the Dominican Republic must have helped a massive amount. 